There have been a lot of gacha releases in 2023, but some have stood out more than others. With this in mind, I wanted to compile a list of my favorite gacha games from 2023 thus far. For those of you unaware, I actually have a video series over on this channel where I cover every upcoming gacha game that I'm aware of every single month. December's is right here, already at 22,000 views. I have one from every month this year, there are games that I miss because they're announced at a later date, but if you're curious and want to stay up to date with everything releasing, or at least most of what's releasing, I'd strongly urge you to go ahead and check these specific videos out. Now let's jump right in. Before we do though, I want to take a moment here to thank our incredible patrons over on Patreon who allow for me to continue to do dedicated videos like this on new, upcoming, recently released, and old gacha games and drama every single day. You guys are incredible. I cannot thank you all enough. Now, back to the video. January 2023 saw the release of Ash Echoes, Eversoul, Dragonair, Silent Gods, Blue Protocol in Japan, Mekarashi, Valiant Force 2. I played a lot of Dragonair, Silent Gods. This is actually a very fun game. It was cross-platform compatible between PC and mobile. It was kind of like a tabletop game, had a great story, great strategic kind of turn-based combat. Eversoul was probably something I dedicated far too much time to. Eversoul actually had some absolutely gorgeous character models, some very, it was, it was an idle RPG, but I don't know, there was something about it. It was just a very high quality game that I really enjoyed. Nothing else in the month of January really stood out to me though. I mean, I enjoyed Blue Protocol, but we're just talking gacha games here and Blue Protocol isn't really technically a gacha game. February, 2023. Zold out, Volzerk, Higan Arathol, Limbus Company, and Honkai Star Rail. This is a this was a packed month. Zold out was I don't know. To me, like I played Zold out. It was kind of boring. Wasn't really that appealing in any aspect. Volzerk was kind of a fun, like creature collection game. Higan Arathol was actually not very good. It's no wonder it's only making like $15,000 a month right now. Limbus Company was a surprise hit. I really enjoyed that. It was very complex, very difficult, very fun as well. Very different kind of game than what I was used to. And I mean, Honkai Star Rail, evidently phenomenal game. Great story, great turn-based combat, great graphical style. Everything about it is great, except for the fact that you can't jump. I think that's really dumb. March 2023, Street Fighter Duel. Error Game Reset, Engage Kill, Black Clover, M, Spaceship, Battle Yamato, Voyagers of Tomorrow, Sakura Ignoramus. This was a month with a lot of beta tests that were going on. I think the only game that successfully, like, properly launched was Street Fighter Duel, which I really didn't play. April 2023 saw Persona 5, The Phantom X, Fellow Moon, Wuthering Waves, Honkai Star Rail, Demian Saga, Love Live. So I think, okay, maybe March was, uh, maybe April rather, was when Honkai Star Rail released, and the previous month was actually the test phase. I played Wuthering Waves, the beta test for that. Oh my god, it was so much fun. I just wish the story was better and there was more to do out in the world. Demian Saga is going to be releasing very soon, and they were the only games here that I actually got to participate in beta tests for. May 2023, Soul Worker Urban Strategy Trash, Danmachi Battle Chronicle, not very good at all. Ether Gazer. Ether Gazer was, is, not was, is such a good game. Very high quality action game. Very high quality characters. I mean, okay, like maybe the story isn't that great, but I mean, this is a game that should have been a huge hit, but for some reason was it? I totally played, I didn't enjoy, and Astro Tataricus got delayed. June 2023, Snowbreak, I totally pride. Laid Back Camp, Tactop Symphony, another test phase for Black Clover Mobile, Brown Dust 2, and Promethea. So the games I played here, Snowbreak, I had an immense amount of fun in Snowbreak. The devs, fantastic people. They sponsored multiple different videos that I did for Snowbreak. I had a lot of fun playing it. Great third person action combat or shooter combat. Good graphical style. Bad story in translations. Oh, Hacked Off Symphony, I did not like. I know that upset some people, but I did not like it. And Brown Dust 2 is actually, in my opinion, one of the best gacha games 
that released this year. Fantastic story, incredible character models, really free to play friendly, great turn-based combat system, great everything. Like literally, I didn't have a single thing that I didn't like in Brown Dust 2. I really genuinely had that much fun in it. July saw King Arthur Legends Rise. I didn't play that. Grand Cross, Age of Titans. I had a little bit of fun in that. They actually sponsored three videos from me as well. And admittedly, it was okay. It wasn't great. It was okay. Devil May Cry Peak of Combat. That is an absolute piece of trash. And unfortunately, I never played Komodo King, Komodo Friends Kingdom. I know people asked me to, but I mean... It's just, I had other games I was playing. August saw Millennium Tour Elf, which unfortunately I did not get to play. Dawnlands was a survival action anime gotcha RPG. Really too many different things that should not coexist together in the same game. It was, it was very bad and I didn't enjoy really any of it. Black Moon, I didn't get to play. Again, Danmachi Battle Chronicle wasn't very good. Tower of Fantasy, I think that's when the console release happened or a beta test for the console version. I don't remember. Tower Fantasy, of course, is a an action anime gotcha open world MMO gotcha game that is actually a pretty good game. Just really bad story and mismanagement and incompetence from the studio. September. See, wait, what? <laughs> so it's brought <laughs> it was automatically broken down into segments on <laughs> on YouTube. And for some reason, Aster Tataricus got called something black. <laughs> what the fuck, man? So Aster Tataricus didn't play. Brontos 2 apparently officially launched in September on PC. Dragon Ever Silent Gods looks like it officially launched in September as well. Honkai Star Rail released on the PS5. Love Brush Chronicles didn't play. And Code Geass Lost Stories was a hot piece of trash. I know I also upset some people with that comment as well, but it's true. October saw Reverse 1999. Dude, Reverse 1999, Brown Dust 2, and Honkai Star Rail thus far are the three gacha games that I think are better than any other this year. If you've not played those three gacha games, I don't know what you're doing. Reverse 1999, of course, is a turn-based, beautiful Victorian-themed gacha game with a fantastic narrative incredible voice acting and i mean there really isn't much to it because it's it's a turn-based mission and chapter-based gotcha game like there's a lot to it but at the same time that kind of summarizes it all pretty easily wizardry variants daphne i didn't get to play that test phase cat fantasy didn't get to play that test phase girls frontline 2 i also didn't get to play that test phase Astra Knights of Veda, I, I didn't play that. And Tokyo Gold Break the Chains was absolute trash. Kind of like Code Geass Lost Stories, except Tokyo Gold Break the Chains was worse. Apparently that's possible. November 2023 saw Reverse 1999 officially release, I think. Sky, Fo uh, Sky Fortress Odyssey, which I did not play. Tokyo Gold Break the Chains officially released. Phantom Blade Executioners, which was kind of a very, very niche game. Very, I don't know, very unique game. I, I It was okay. I wasn't really that big a fan of it. S-Class Heroin, I never got to play in Dark Clan Squad, I also didn't get to play. And finally, Gacha Games coming in December 2023. Black Clover M, I did play. Honestly, not a bad game. I was surprised it was not a bad game. Black Stella Ptolemaea, Crystal of Atlan, which is holding a beta test right now. Unfortunately, I did not get in. That was very sad. Acocalypse. This is a game that is actually coming out, I, I think at some point this week. Yeah, it's, it's the 11th, it's a Monday, it's coming out I think this week. And I'm gonna be potentially streaming it, and I have a dedicated sponsored video for it. Yeah, I accepted that sponsorship because I'm really excited for it. It looks really good. Trails of Cold Steel Northern War, I, I actually haven't played any of those games, the Legend of Heroes games, and Bleed Cell Resonance, which I think that actually got delayed and that is everything that those are all the games that released that i'm aware of at least in video form this year i know there are some other ones out there i know there are other ones that held test phases i actually have a website called mygotchahub.com where i go over pre-registrations for and announcements for upcoming gotcha games three games at, at the entirety of the year three games really impressed me reverse 1999 brown dust 2 and honkai star rail that's it those are the three games that released this year that I enjoyed more than any other. Now, those aren't the games that I think are the best gotcha games of 
the last several years, just period. I'll have a full dedicated video out with my thoughts on the best gacha games right now at some point in the next week or two. But until then, these are my favorite gacha game releases of 2023 up until this point. And given it's December 12th now, I don't really think it's gonna change. Now, if none of these games are of any interest to you, absolutely no problem. Got you covered with two different videos on screen right now. That might be more up your alley.